Welcome to Medical Talk Show. Uh, today we have Dr. Vikram Kishore Reddy sir, our consultant neurophysician here to create an awareness about epilepsy. So, welcome sir. Hi, welcome. Good morning. Good morning sir. The first question is, what is the difference between epilepsy and a seizure? See, a uh, seizure is an episode where uh, there will be transient, abnormal and excessive discharge of neural activity in the brain which can lead to signs and symptoms. Whereas epilepsy is an disorder where there will be predisposition of a patient to have a recurrent seizures. So sometimes patient can have seizures more than 24 hours apart or sudden epilepsy syndromes or patients having seizures with a structural damage in the brain. So these conditions are called epilepsy. So what are the main causes of seizures? So seizures based on the age, there are like multiple reasons. So in younger age like neonates and uh, children, the common causes of uh, seizures include birth asphyxia, hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia, certain infections and of course a febrile seizure which is an entity which happens only in patient, in uh, children. When it comes to the adults, the most common causes include trauma, tumors, vascular like CSVT, ischemic stroke and sometimes metabolic seizures like hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia, hyponatremia and of course infections like tuberculosis or neurocysticercosis. When it comes to the older age group, the common causes include vascular like strokes, ischemic or hemorrhagic or brain tumors or infections and metabolic causes like hyponatremia or hypocalcemia. So, so what are the, some of the common effects of seizures? See, seizures can affect any part of the body. So seizure, if it happens uh, focally, they have repetitive movements of only one limb, either leg or hand or one half of the body. If it happens all over the body, it is called a GTCS. If it happens only one part of the body, it is called a focal seizure. So based on the distribution of the body uh, affecting, they are again classified into focal or generalized. Sometimes they may lose consciousness or sometimes they may not lose the consciousness during the seizure episode. Okay, sir. So uh, how do you evaluate seizures? So any patient uh, who is having a seizure, we first of all uh, properly ask the history. Is it really a seizure or something else like sometimes syncope, sometimes uh, paroxysmal non-epileptic form events can also look like seizures. So first thing is we need to classify whether it is a seizure or not a seizure. So once you are confirmed that it is a seizure, we ask the history like how the seizure started, whether it started on one limb or uh, how long does it, does it last and uh, what are the uh, are different, different uh, things which happened during that episode. Then based on that, we also examine the patient, look for certain findings like uh, neurocutaneous markers in case of children. Then based on the situation, we go for blood evaluation like uh, looking for blood sugars, infections like calcium levels and then sodium levels. Then we'll ask the patient to get an EEG to see whether the patient is having any chance of recurrent seizures or sometimes EEG is done to come, uh, diagnose certain epileptic syndromes and also it gives an idea about the epileptic focus and of course in required or selected population we go for brain imaging to rule out any structural reason for the brain uh, the seizures okay sir so uh, what are the do's and don'ts when a seizure comes so see uh, most of them will be panicked so don't panic don't uh, crowd around the patient be calm so try to move the sharp objects or harmful objects around the patient so that that will injure the patient. And once the seizures are aborted, try to turn them to one side and put a pillow beneath the head so that the secretions come out. And we often see patient putting, I mean attendants putting, putting a rods or keychains in the hands, which should not be done. And do not put anything in the mouth. Don't try to put your fingers, don't try to put a cloth don't try to put even the medicine when the patient is having seizures. And also you should not try to restrain the patient or hold the patient when they are seizuring. So once the seizure completes, make them lie down on a, uh, a clear uh, area where there are no harmful objects. And most of the seizures will abort in usually one to two minutes. And if they are continuous and if they have recurrent episodes, it is always better to shift to the hospital. Okay, sir. So do all the patients need a long-term treatment? See, uh, most of the patient attendants will have this myth. So they feel that if they have seizures on uh, once, they feel that do it need to take medicines for lifelong. No, 
it all depends on the type of seizure and what are the causes for seizure see some seizures they occur in uh, neonates where uh, uh, they become benign and then uh, on a time dependent basis they come uh, they, they, they reduce without any medicines whereas certain uh, seizures which happen due to hypoglycemia or hyponatremia or even the infections so once you control these factors so there is no need for them to continue medicines for long time and there are certain conditions like epilepsy syndromes or any structural damage to the brain or congenital malformations of the brain where you need to definitely put them on long term medications so if the patient is not responding to medicines like using more than 2 or 3 anti epileptics we label them as a drug resistant epilepsy so for them we need to evaluate is there any reason why the patient is having drug resistance so if the brain mri shows any lesion which can be operated we also have certain uh, surgical procedures like lesionectomy lobectomy or hemispherectomy if the patient is resistant to the drugs okay so thanks for giving us your valuable time yeah thank you thank you